Welcome to the MaxiCare Wellness Fridays with a topic, Get the Facts Straight About Dengue. I'm Patricia Bermudez. He's on your host for today, and I'm absolutely thrilled that we get to be together again for this webinar. We are tackling a really relevant and important topic today. Do share your thoughts, though, and learnings of this event to your social media accounts using the hashtag to live your best life. That's exactly what we want you to do. That's why we have this and MaxiCare Wellness Fridays. And don't forget to tag MaxiCare using their social media accounts. Are you already following them on Facebook? I sure hope so. They are at MaxiCare Healthcare Corp. Their official ID can be found at MaxiCare Healthcare. And also, they have a health and wellness ID. It's at MaxiCare Health and Wellness. You may also subscribe to their YouTube channel. You'll see a lot of great content there that will definitely help you well live your best life. Please do look for them at MaxiCare Healthcare Corporation. For those of you who are watching our live stream, do press that share button right now. Can you do it? Right now, press the share button. Share it to everybody and you can help educate your friends and your loved ones by posting this event on your pages. And please don't forget to also press the like button. Can you guys do that? Those who are watching us on social, press the like button as many times as you can. Or especially when you hear something that is useful, relevant, and important to you. Today we have our experts, Dr. Sibella Bad and Dr. Jericho Alvaran, who will share their expertise and experience about dengue. In this interactive session, we'll be more informed about dengue, its signs and symptoms, the right time to bring a suspicious dengue case in the hospital, and how to manage and treat it. I know that you all are excited to get more information and get the facts straight about dengue, right? But first, let's answer some poll questions before we get going. Is that okay with you guys? This is going to be quick, and all you have to do is click on the answer that best suits you. And this will be for a lot of people who are watching us on Zoom. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Here is our first poll question. On a scale of one to five, five, of course, being the highest, how informed are you about the dengue? Hmm, do you feel like you know everything there is to know about dengue? Well, then you're definitely a five. If you have no clue or really have little knowledge about this, but you're here because you want to learn, maybe you're a what? So let's see the results to see where people are at. And most of us are on three. 43% of us are midway. That means we know enough. Oh, there's still so much to learn about dengue. And I'm glad that you're here to do just that. Let's go to our second poll question. Now, this session is jam-packed with information about dengue, and that's a promise. But what specific topic? Do you want to know about this? And you can choose more than one. Do you want to know about the earliest signs and symptoms of dengue? That's important. New ways on how to prevent dengue. Are there new ways? What about how to protect oneself from dengue? So this is talking about you. You protect yourself. What about what causes dengue? The high risk places or situations for dengue. Or how to manage or treat dengue. Sige nga, alin dyan sa mga subtopics, yung mga particular information na gusto nyong marinig or matutunan about dengue in this topic. So many of you, of course, want to know how to manage or treat dengue and want to find out what the earliest signs and symptoms are of dengue and, of course, how you can protect yourself from dengue. Those are great topics and we will definitely tackle those with our experts. Let's go now to our next poll question. Where do you usually get your information about dengue? I wonder if you rely solely on news, on television. What about on blogs online? You know, there are a lot of mommy and parenting blogs out there. There is also a lot of information on Facebook and other social media channels. Is that where you get your information from? What about from friends? And from relatives, uh, you uh, what about from medical professionals, from their lectures, their webinars, or when you go for a consultation? Of course, lectures and webinars like this one are very helpful. Saan yung nakukuha yung mga information that you know about dengue? A lot of people do attend uh, webinars such as this one, and I'm glad. Thank you for being here. And so many also get it from the news on TV. Thanks for sharing with us that information. It also helps us understand and know where you're getting your information from. But this one, we have two experts who will share with you pertinent information about dengue. Thanks so much for participating. Now it's time to meet your speakers. I've been talking about our experts. Let me share information about them too. Our first speaker is a research collaborator for the Mayo Clinic, a clinic associate professor at UPPGH 
infectious disease consultant at the Medical City and the chair of Infection Control Committee at the Medical City. He also has a board certification at the American Board of Internal Medicine Infectious Disease. We will have with us today Dr. Sibel Lara Abad. Our second speaker is a pediatrician from the Institute of Pediatrics from the Medical City and also performs home health care assessments for HMOs in the United States as he is certified by the American Board of Pediatrics who took up residency, by the way, at the Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. He also practiced at the Children's Hospital in Wisconsin. We're very happy to have Dr. Jericho Alvaran with us this afternoon. Hello, Dr. Sibel, and hello, Dr. Jericho. Hello. Hello, Ms. Pat. Good afternoon. Yes, it's good to see both of you. You know, I, I wonder, um, we had you both last time. I'm sure so many things has, uh, has, has happened, and particularly uh, with uh, your profession, uh, with all of the hats that you both wear. Uh, I wonder, Doc Jericho, um, have you been busy particularly with dengue cases? Um, unfortunately, uh, dengue cases are steadily rising, so it's a little busy. All right. Well, we're going to be tackling that, the rise of dengue and all the information that you will be sharing as a pediatrician because I, as a mother, of course, would love to know how I can protect my children and how I can detect whether they have dengue or not. But what about you, Dr. Subel? You have, uh, you know, a huge responsibility, um, of course, being in infection control uh, and uh, infectious disease. Um what are the things that people are really worried about when it comes to dengue, especially now that, as Dr. Jericho says, everything is on the rise? Uh, is that what also is keeping you busy busy on the research side? Uh, yes. So unfortunately, there is uh, a rise in dengue cases that we've been seeing in the last few weeks. And... Um, uh, there was actually a research project that was supposed to uh, start but was put on hold because of COVID. Uh, COVID has put on hold many research projects that are not related to COVID, but hopefully we can go ahead and start on that dengue research project soon. All right. Thanks so much, Dr. Bell. So as you can see for our attendees and viewers, we have two great um wonderful people who will be sharing with us, experts who will be sharing with us about dengue. But before we begin this conversation with Doc Sibel and Doc Jericho, let's have our trivia time. Trivia time is where I get to share with you guys some trivia that we will be talking about and tackling later, just like this first one. According to the Department of Health, there were 45,416 cases of dengue from January to June 2022, which is 45% higher compared to the same period last year. Central Visaya, Central Luzon, and the Zamboanga Peninsula recorded the most number of cases at 13, 12, and 10% respectively. Sorry, I just felt like I was a news reader at that time. I'm going to turn off. I'm going to turn off that news reading skill as we go into <laughs> our second trivia. A dengue test alone can actually set you back 400 pesos and 3,000 pesos thereabouts. That's the range. Dengue tests in private clinics cost around 1,000 on average, while tests in major hospitals can go as high as 2,000 pesos to 3,000 pesos. Now, in public hospitals, dengue tests are cheaper. 400 to 600 pesos. As for hospital bills, now we talk about this. In a private or the average medical cost of one week confinement is 20,000 pesos in public hospitals and 40,000 pesos in private hospitals. However, the cost of dengue in the Philippines can balloon to six figures in severe cases. In fact, there was a young dengue patient in Mindanao in 2014 whose 26-day treatment reached almost 800,000 pesos, including the cost of hospitalization and medicines. My, but I'm glad that uh, he's better, I, and I hope that he continues to be. Now, here's our third trivia. An article in 2019 in Relief Web uh, stated from Children's Organization Save the Children, it said that nearly half of all dengue deaths in the Philippines are children under nine years old. 
natatakot ako dito. I have a two-year-old and of course my teenagers are also at risk but this is something that hits hard for all of us parents, I am sure, and those who are living with small children. Last trivia, according to the Center for Disease Control, dengue is common in more than 100 countries around the world. About one in four people who are infected with dengue will get sick, though most people recover about a week, after about a week. One in 20 people who get sick will develop, though, severe dengue. So here we are getting the facts straight about dengue with Doc Sibel and Doc Jericho. Doc Jericho, I want to go back to that um, uh, to that trivia, to that uh, one thing that we share that nearly half of all deaths in the Philippines are children under nine years old. That um, being, that's, that's tough for you. That's tougher for us parents, right? Yeah, uh, in general, unfortunately, you know, uh, dengue is just more severe in children. So they're more prone to complications and, of course, uh, mortality, unfortunately. And we will delve into that deeper later on. Doc Sibel, is this a, an outbreak, an epidemic? Where are we now? So at the moment, it looks like the numbers are showing that uh, we are... We have reached the threshold of epidemic uh, numbers already. And when they say epidemic, it means it's more than what we would expect at this time of the year. Uh, and so um, we're there. So it's ho hopefully not a pandemic, uh, but it is kind of a epidemic threshold numbers. Wow. 45,416 cases, as we mentioned, just in the first half of this year and like i mentioned in that trivia no and what, uh, going back to what dr sibel was mentioning it's 45 percent higher compared to the same period last year that's why we're having this conversation and i go straight to uh this question for doc sibel um for this july uh, we're at the end of this month already uh do we still have a rise in dengue cases in the country so the number of uh, cases for July are still being calculated, but for the numbers that are in so far point to an increase in numbers. Actually, I took a peek earlier at the numbers uh, up to mid-July, and it looks like the dengue cases have now risen up to 83% compared to a year ago. So uh, it says that out of about 17 um provinces or 17 areas where there's a lot of dengue, about 14 out of the 17 have reached the epidemic threshold. So our numbers are really climbing compared to the years prior. Wow. And, you know, we were talking about 45,000 cases, and that's a huge jump from the uh, January to June period to just the first couple of weeks of July. So already, honestly, I want to just show my appreciation for MaxiCare. This is such a timely conversation that we're having. And I'm so glad that we have so many attendees here and are also watching on social media. This is going to be an important conversation. Do share it on your pages. Please uh, um, uh, press that share button right now because we want more and more people to hear this. Now, Doc Sibel, why do you think um, this is so uh, is there an effect of the pandemic to that number that you're talking about? So uh, maybe partially uh, the pandemic has, infect, uh, has affected the numbers because uh, I guess if you compare it to last year, last year people were quite scared to go out and really did not want to be admitted. And so the comparison numbers from last year are much higher this year now that people are up and about. So that's one. Uh, the other reason is, of course, it's rainy season and it's about to rain outside. And uh, the rainy season does bring in those um, the vectors of the virus, which is the mosquito, which we'll talk about uh, some more later on. Uh, so more rain actually means more numbers and more mosquitoes, more dengue, uh, unfortunately. So maybe those are the two top reasons why uh, we're uh, seeing a rise in numbers uh, this uh, particular uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, but Dr. Sibel, was there a dengue uh, epidemic before COVID? Well, if you still remember uh, before COVID, <laughs> uh, which was seems such a long time ago, uh, we actually had an epidemic of... Um, dengue uh, in the Southeast Asian region around mid of 2019. And actually that was flagged because really we had, I think, around 160,000 cases by mid-year uh, in the Philippines, which is kind of double or triple the usual number. So we did have a dengue epidemic right before uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. 
You're right. It seemed ages ago, you know. We, we couldn't remember. Parang stuck pa rin tayo dito. But uh, thanks for sharing because I was going to ask about the uh, historical numbers, right? But um, we, it's just encouraging, you know, this has happened before. And now we should have more means and more information to be able to curb uh, the numbers that we've been uh, seeing. But Doc Jericho, I, I go to you. Uh, Doc Sibel is talking about the rainy season. But generally, what are the months wherein we usually expect a rise in dengue cases? And, and why is that? Um, first, we should remember you know, dengue is endemic in all regions of the country. So we actually see dengue all year round, but the country's outbreaks are mostly seasonal. So with most episodes, we see, we see them during the rainy season. So that's around June to February. Um, as uh, Dr. Sabel uh, mentioned earlier, the rainy season, of course, contributes to the increase in the mosquito population. So more vectors mean more disease, unfortunately. Uh, thanks for also sharing that because that's a good reminder, no? Minsan kasi tayo, we just try to be uh, more conscious about protecting ourselves from dengue pagkatagulan. But you're right, good reminder that actually dengue is year-round. But what causes dengue, Doc Sibel? Uh, so dengue is another virus. No, We're all very familiar with viruses these days. So there are respiratory viruses like COVID and the flu, but there's also a uh, dengue virus, which is actually a member of a viral hemorrhagic group. So it sounds kind of scary uh, mm. because it causes a little bit of bleeding uh, for some people who develop bad dengue. But it's kind of a different type of virus. Uh, and it's also what you call vector-borne, meaning it's born or it's carried by a vector, which in this case is a mosquito. And that mosquito is called uh, Aedes aegypti or Aedes aegypti. Uh, and we have that mosquito, unfortunately, in uh, the Philippines. Uh, as Dr. Jericho mentioned, it's in all provinces of the Philippines pretty much, but uh, centered in some other uh, urban uh, provinces mostly. No? And uh, so I would remember dengue that way, that it's a virus and it's a viral, uh, ve sorry, a vector-borne virus that's uh, carried by a mosquito. Are there any other causes of dengue? Uh, no other causes of dengue. So it really is um, carried by that uh, terrible mosquito. But we can get dengue through uh, other means, but these are rare. So for example, if you're a transplant patient, you can get it through your donor, but th uh, that's very rare. Or if you get blood transfusion, sometimes you can get dengue that way too. But again, very rare. Thanks for that. Now, I, I stay with you, Doc Sibel. I'd like for you to educate us about the different types, or is it stages of dengue? Is that what you call it? And amongst that, which are the most dangerous or require close monitoring from your healthcare team? Okay, so let's talk about the different types of dengue first. Um, thankfully, the dengue names are much more easier to remember. It's just dengue one, two, three, four. They're not given any Greek alphabet names. Uh, so there are only four serotypes of dengue. Uh, very easy to remember. They're all present in the Philippines. Uh, initially, dengue 1 and 2 were more common, but now dengue 3 is probably the most common, although it's hard to say because we don't always genotype the dengue strains. Uh, but nevertheless, whether it's dengue 1, 2, 3, or 4, they cause the same illness. And the different stages of dengue, there are three stages of dengue. The first stage is called the febrile phase. Uh, and then the second stage is called the critical phase. And then the third phase is the recovery phase. So there's only three phases. And if you're lucky, and most people are lucky, they will skip the critical phase. So they will just um, proceed to the recovery phase right away. Uh, so the critical phase, as the name implies, that's the one you really want to monitor closely in the hospital setting. And fortunately, only a few percent uh, go through a critical phase. Uh, and most um, patients with dengue can be managed at home. Uh, so the kind of the, the things you want to look out for to monitor during the critical phase will be your platelets, uh, kind of the fluid status. So things like that will be monitored in the hospital setting. So that, that's what you want or when you want the patient to be in the hospital. All right, for a close monitoring of the healthcare team. I asked Doc Jericho now what the signs and symptoms are of dengue, particularly for children. So um, we should remember, you know, when the symptoms first appear, it is difficult to distinguish dengue from other viral illnesses, no? because the symptoms are nonspecific. 
Um, dengue fever in children usually starts with high fevers, um, lasting for about two to seven days. Um, other symptoms include nausea, vomiting, fatigue, um, sore muscles. Um, in the next uh, stage, children with dengue fever may have signs of bleeding, um, like petechiae, or small red dots on the skin. Um, these marks are usually seen in the armpits, um, chest, um, arms, and legs. Um, children can also have nosebleeds, um, gum bleeding, and blood in the stool, unfortunately. Um, it's more alarming in children yeah. um, because their, their bodies are more immature. Um, the coping uh, mechanisms are not there yet. Um, particularly infants tend to develop more severe dengue disease, unfortunately. Can I, can I just roll back a little bit? You talked about those red spots that can be found on the children, particularly their, their arms or extremities. Um, sometimes ba nako confuse natin yan with other things kasi minsan syempre for the children madami silang parang things on the skin but automatic na naman na dengue is that like a clear sign already uh, no <laughs> of course you can have other rashes like a heat rash no um, but you have to um, look at the big picture or the whole picture no? so you have to look at the other symptoms again the hallmark is fever usually I haven't seen a uh, dengue fever without fever, no? So <laughs> you have the fever and the rash. That sure. usually points to a viral illness. But um, I guess we'll discuss more later how we can um, confirm if it's actually dengue. Now, you said that it's more alarming in children. How different are the signs and symptoms of dengue for adults, Dr. Sibel? They're actually quite similar, no? So the uh, symptoms that are enumerated by uh, J Dr. Jericho earlier uh, are also present in adults, no? It's always the abrupt onset of fever, which is why it's called the febrile phase, so just fever. It's very rare, I think, if not impossible, to have dengue without the fever. It's just degrees of fever, really. Some have really, really high fevers, which brings them to the hospital because it makes you feel achy. So it comes with myalgias or body aches. Uh, another kind of distinct symptom of uh, dengue is what you call retroorbital pain, meaning pain in the back of the eye. So it's like a headache that they describe in the back of their eye. Uh, so that's mm. kind of distinct with dengue. And then they also can have, as mentioned earlier, a little bit of nausea, a little bit of vomiting. Some people actually have diarrhea and fever. Uh, abdominal pain. So it can be very nonspecific, but perhaps the top three symptoms would be fever, headache, uh, and then uh, body aches would be those top three. There's really not a lot of respiratory symptoms. Oh, I have a question for you later on, but I'll save it mm -hmm. for later. You can be confused with, with COVID, but first, uh, Dr. Sibel, after you've shared all of those signs and symptoms, how do you actually confirm if you have dengue? So there's a blood test that we do to try and confirm uh, the dengue uh, fever. So there are typically two blood tests. One is a dengue NS1 antigen. So it's typically done if you present during the first one or two days of your fever. But if you present a little bit late, perhaps you're not sure, you don't want to go to the hospital. Uh, so you have day four, day five of fever, and you present to the hospital around day six. Then we don't do the antigen anymore. It's probably, it might be negative. So we do the antibody testing. So we do dengue antibodies uh, to try and see if your body has already formed antibodies against dengue. So those are the two main tests for um, dengue confirmation. There are some other tests, but these are rarer. So there's a dengue PCR test, uh, but typically just done in bigger institutions and for select patients only. Hey, for our attendees and our viewers, you may actually visit any of MaxiCare's 12 primary care clinics to consult with a doctor or get a lab test done for dengue. Those tests that Dr. Sibel was talking about, did you know that unlimited consultation and lab tests are part of the benefits given to MaxiCare members as well as Prima Gold and Prima Silver prepaid card holders? No appointment and letter of authorization are needed. So no LOA. Just <laughs> walk in and expect your consultation or lab test needs to be addressed immediately. Ang sarap pakinggan, ganyan talaga yung service. Now, for a more relaxing healthcare experience, we encourage you to visit a primary care clinic which features state-of-the-art diagnostics 
and laboratory equipment. Have you been? Here are the locations, including the contact information. And let me just dwell on that a little bit. We do have a lot of locations that you can visit. Um, you can go to the W City Center, which is found in Taguig. There's also Bridgetown in uh, Ugong Norte in Quezon City. Cebu has one that's 24-7 at the Cebu Business Park Ayala. There's also Clark at the Techno Hub at the, uh, the ground floor of SM City Clark. At the Ayala North Exchange, this is uh, in Makati City, they also have a primary care clinic. At the Double Dragon, have you been there also? This is along Makapagal Avenue. Uh, same with Alabang, you should visit it at North Gate, Philinvest. For those who are in Davao, our families in Davao, hello sa lahat. And they are in Abriza. Double Dragon Wellness and Rehab also is at the Double Dragon Meridian Park along Makapagal. There's also four more that we're going to be sharing with you if you guys were able to capture that. They also have a primary care clinic in Centris. That is at Eton Centris in Quezon City. And we also have one in Iloilo, which, at, which is at the Techno Place at the Business Park. Then the newest ones are in Vivi Solivin. I was just there recently. And this is along EDSA near Green Hills, uh, found in San Juan. It's really beautiful. And the Cebu Skyrise, which is at the Cebu IT Park in Cebu City. So as you can see, pumunta lang kayo dito. And I mentioned to you, right, you may visit any of their 12 primary care clinics to consult with a doctor or get a lab test for dengue and you can expect your consultation and lab needs to be immediately addressed at the PCCs. Now, MaxiCare though, also provides home <coughs> care for members in Metro Manila. Alam nyo ba na pwede rin kayo mag-avail ng home care for those who are living in Makati, Mandaluyong, Pasay, Pateros, Taguig, Paranaque, Las Piñas, Montenlupa, Manila, mga taga San Juan, Pasig, mga kapitbahay ko sa Marikina and Quezon City, <coughs> in Ta, Taytay Rizal and Kamanava area, you may avail of the home care services that MaxiCare provides for members in Metro Manila. You can also book a lab test in the comfort and convenience of your home. We will share the link with which you may book a home care service. I can see that on the chat right now. You guys can go to that link or save that for later. So these are all important and you can see more information on your screens. Great for MaxiCare to be sharing this with all of our attendees and our viewers. Doc Jericho, I shift now to you. Why do the symptoms differ in each patient? Uh, I mean, why would others only develop mild symptoms and others are a lot more severe? Is it a matter of your immunity and your, your uh, how healthy you are? How does that work? Um, so there are factors that determine the severity of a dengue infection. No, So... First is the viral factor. So severe dengue can occur during infection with any of the four dengue serotypes um, that Dr. Sibel mentioned earlier. No? But several studies have suggested that the risk is highest with the dengue 2 virus. No? Specific genotype of the virus can also affect the severity of the infection. Um, second factor is if you have been exposed to dengue before. Um, multiple studies have shown that the risk of severe disease is higher um, during a second uh, dengue infection. Um, the third factor is age. So the risk for severe dengue appears to decline with age. Um, as I mentioned earlier, infants are at the highest risk for severe dengue. So you're right, we can definitely say that a person's immune system responses are likely to play a role in the clearance of infection and severity of the disease. So let's all get healthy, right? That's why we have our MaxiCare Wellness Fridays. This is all about information and sharing all that. Thanks, Doc Jericho. We really have to, you know, I mean, our, we, we have to be uh, prepared for all of the different diseases that are coming about by, by being healthy uh, all over. Um, I, I, what is the treatment or management for dengue, Doc Jericho, for pediatric patients? So, um, again, b fever being the hallmark of the disease, no? it is important to reduce the fever for children properly. No? So if the children has a temperature, uh, if the child has a temperature above 38, um, you can give a sponge bath. Um, it's okay to give them a bath. It's, uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> you can, um, and you can give the child the right dose of paracetamol. No? So you can give it every four hours. However, please do not give paracetamol around the clock if the child does not have fever. No? It is important for us to know 
um, the pattern of the fever. So if you're giving paracetamol around the clock, we wouldn't know if the child is actually having fever. Um, it is important to bring the temperature down to prevent convulsions or febrile seizures. Um, avoid certain drugs like aspirin or ibuprofen um, because uh, these can worsen platelet problems and also cause um, gastritis. No? Um, like most viral infections, there is no specific treatment for dengue. You only provide supportive care with fluids. Um, it is also important to know uh, that no antibiotics are needed to treat this viral infection. Mm. Um, Dr. Sibel will be, <laughs> will be happy to know that. Um, <laughs> increased oral fluid intake is recommended. Always use oral fluids if one is able to drink. Um, supplementation with IV fluids may be necessary if your child is unable to drink um, adequately or is in shock. Um, blood products will be needed if the patient is bleeding. Mm -hmm. Again, as mentioned earlier, it is important for your child to maintain good nutrition and hydration. No? You want to give their bodies the best chance possible to fight off the infection. Good to know. Thank you so much uh, from a mom, from a mother. Those are really important things. Yet, yeah, we will continue to consult with our doctors. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate uh, pediatricians like you. You are our partners, right, in, in really raising healthy, happy children. What about Doxibel? For adults, what is the treatment or management for dengue? So the treatment in adults is also very similar to children. It's actually perhaps less uh, stringent because the adult, you know, can talk, can discuss with you what's going on as opposed to a very young child. But the treatment is also dependent upon the phase or the stage of dengue that we talked about earlier. So during the febrile phase, like Doc Jack mentioned earlier, you really want to bring the fever down. So you would take paracetamol or an antipyretic of your choice. You can take a bath, uh, which is a common Filipino myth that you can't take a bath if there's a fever. So you can go Go ahead and bathe to bring the temperature down. Uh, and then after that, uh, you uh, also want to hydrate very well. So try to drink uh, oral fluids, uh, water, or maybe something with some electrolytes such as Gatorade. Uh, you don't want to drink, you know, coffee or tea because uh, it will make you pee some more. And you really want to kind of hold on to all the water that you that you can. And then if you enter through the critical phase, that's really when you want to be in the hospital so you can be monitored closely. Uh, and when I say monitoring, they will monitor your blood pressure, your heart rate, uh, your temperature. Uh, they will monitor your platelets because during the critical phase after the fever lysis, this is actually when your platelets will drop. And so it's very funny when you feel when you start to feel better. That's when your platelets sometimes drop, and that's when you want to go home, but the doctor is saying, please stay one or two more days so we can monitor your platelets. Because the fever lysis, and that's when the uh, numbers start to go down. So perhaps you'll get a daily blood test uh, to check on your platelets and on some other uh, labs. Uh, during this time, you also might be hydrated, but we're probably going to start on cutting back on the hydration. We don't want to overhydrate you because we don't want to run into the problem of um, having too much fluid in the body, which might uh, lead to some difficulty breathing, no? especially if you go into severe dengue. And then finally, during the recovery phase, that's when you start to feel better, your numbers start to go up, perhaps a little bit of monitoring is still done. We're starting to stop your IV fluids. If you're in the hospital, we're trying to encourage you to drink and eat some more uh, because you're starting to feel better. Again, we don't want to overhydrate you. Uh, I forgot to mention earlier, Ms. Pat, um, when people enter into the critical phase, there's some warning signs that they uh, want to kind of um, remember or keep an eye on because most people will have mild dengue and will not proceed and will just skip the critical phase. But the warning signs include uh, lethargy or feeling restless, uh, if they're vomiting all the time. Uh, if they start to change uh, a different color in terms of their eyes, so their eyes might turn yellow. Uh, if, they're, oh. if they have really bad abdominal pain, uh, if they have uh, mucosal bleeding, so if they bleed when they brush their teeth or they have uh, a lot of nose bleeds without provocation, these are kind of warning signs of dengue that maybe uh, the platelets are becoming low and you need to go to the hospital. Wow, thank you so much for that. It's uh, That's why I appreciate conversations with experts like Doxibel and Doc Jericho. Uh, I surely will be re-watching this 
portion uh, on social media because um, we need to be reminded on what to watch out for. Normally, we go into panic right away or we don't know what it is. Uh, or normally, we do the wrong home care, right? Uh, a lot of people are probably still not going to hospitals um, until everything is severe. At least now we know and we have more information about that. Um, Dr. Jericho, since dengue is common in tropical countries, how can we actually prevent ourselves from having it? Is it moving to North America? Of course, that's not that <laughs> That is not the answer, <laughs> but how can we prevent ourselves from having it? Um, so the DOH would like to remind us to do uh, what we call the four S's no, versus dengue. No? First is seek and destroy mosquito breeding sites. Um, second is self-protection measures. Um, third is seek early consultation. And fourth is support fogging only in areas with a high number of cases. No? So if we can control the source of the virus, uh, we can definitely decrease the spread of the disease. So things that you can do, um, you can use screens on your doors and windows. If there are broken or damaged screens, we should repair it right away. Uh, make sure you close your doors and windows that have no screens. Um, if it is not too warm, although <laughs> this may be impossible, <laughs> have kids wear long sleeve <laughs> shirts, <laughs> long yeah. pants, shoes, and socks when they go outside. And if possible, you can use mosquito nets at night. Uh, you can, of course, use a mosquito repellent as well. Um, limit the amount of time kids spend outside during the day. Uh, the mosquito is a day-biting mosquito, no? So um, especially in the hours around dawn and dusk, um, those are uh, when the mosquitoes are most active. Um, don't give mosquitoes places to breed. Um, they lay their eggs in water, so get rid of standing water in containers. And be sure to change the water in pet bowls and flower vases. No? Um, Cover the buckets and drums that are used for storing water and keep your dustbins clean. That's a lot. I love the four <laughs> S's and all the practical reminders that we can do around the house. And also, Shempre, um, you know, to apply repellent. Those, Shempre, I, I have a young one, right? Okay lang ba yung mga stickers? Or, you know, there's so many new things that, that we can wear. Like, I don't know if you guys are parents, those who are watching, but they do sell, like, repellent that are stickers that come in nice like cartoony design <laughs> or they also have i've seen you parang meron pa siyang mga bracelets um, i mean do those work um or better talaga repellent para you're completely covered it is still best to use uh the repellents no um the patches can probably repel the, the mosquitoes for a short period of time um, but uh, it is still be best to use those repellents. The ones that you put on your wrist, um, there are no studies to show that those are effective, unfortunately. So mosquito repellents that you apply on your skin are still the best. All right. Um, sorry, medyo mag extend lang ako. What about plants? Are there plants that we can uh, put around our homes? Uh, meron akong neem. I don't know if you guys have heard of neem trees, and that's why we planted them. Now they're trees. They used to be this. <laughs> this now I have like, so many neem trees, N-E-E-M, I think, around my, my house. Uh, of course, nothing uh, nothing can compare to really keeping your house clean, you defogging in, in, in areas where there are a lot of cases. But have you also heard of those plants that can help prevent? I guess I can answer <laughs> a little bit. No? So, yes, there are actually some plants that, are, that repel insects. Uh, in general, no? so in, that includes mosquitoes, I guess. Uh, so the ones that I've heard of are eucalyptus tree. Uh, yeah. They have a nice scent, so they repel uh, these insects. And then I think citronella would be another type of plant uh, that repels insects. Uh, so, you know, you see sometimes when you uh, go through um, areas where they sell a lot of plants, they'll put it on their placards. So citronella is here you know, to prevent dengue and things like that. But I think it's m more or less... Uh, mainly to help prevent um, insects in general. Mm, I see. But still, um, yun pa rin. Yung mga in-advice sa atin ni Doc Jericho, uh, the four S's and all of those things, keeping your surroundings clean, all of the stagnant water, getting rid of that, covering pails and whatever else, those are important. And I like the screen. I'm going to inspect our screens. Oh, my <laughs> butas. Kailangan palitan. <laughs> Doc Sibel, this was the question that I wanted to ask earlier, and I had saved it for this. You, you talked about the signs and symptoms, right, of dengue. 
how do we now differentiate dengue from COVID? From what I hear, parang madaming similar eh. Yeah, so that's a great question, no? especially now that the COVID number is also rising. No? So parang there's a pandemic and there's an epidemic. Uh, and as you mentioned, there's a little bit of crossover between the two because they're both viruses. And when you get a viral infection, the symptoms are really what you call nonspecific. So you really you can't tell unless you get tested. But there are mm-hmm. some clues. No? So for example, for dengue, as mentioned by Doc Jack earlier, the really prominent symptoms are the high fever or the abrupt onset of the fever, um, the headache or the retroorbital pain, uh, plus the body aches and then the rash that follows after a couple of days. No? There really is a paucity or a lack of um, respiratory symptoms with dengue. So there's not mm-hmm. a lot of runny nose. There's no cough typically. There's really no sore throat. Uh, there's no congestion. So in the absence of all those respiratory symptoms, you would think of dengue more than you would think of COVID. Okay, thank you for sharing that with us. You know, all of our attendees, I'm sure... Uh, some are already sending in their questions. For those who have questions, we will have um, a Q&A portion uh, in just a, a short while. You guys can already send your questions via the Q&A box should you wish. But I'd like to thank Dr. Bell and Dr. Jack. Many of the information that you shared uh, to us are uh, new, but all are very, very useful. Thank you so much. We're very grateful. Uh, like I said, we will have our live Q&A in just a short while. So do send your questions using the Q&A button found at the bottom of your screen. Now, I'd like to move on to our new segment called Myths or Facts. So with the help of our experts today, we will determine if each statement that we will present is a fact or a myth. This is fun because the best part is all of you here on Zoom, you guys are involved in the segment. Our statement, statements will appear using the poll feature of the Zoom room. So all you have to do is click on fact if you think the information is correct or myth if it's false or an idea not proven yet, right? Fun. Are you guys ready? Myth or fact? Here we go. Let's show the first one. I already had dengue once. Therefore, I am immune to it. Is this a myth or a fact? After you guys answer, I will ask our doctor to share with us whether this is in fact a fact or if it's a myth. So what do you think? If you had dengue once, you're immune. A lot of people, 94% say it's a myth. Can we ask Doc Jericho to share with us whether this is indeed a myth? Uh, so this is a myth. Um, as Dr. Sibel discussed earlier, no, dengue has four serotypes, dengue 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, infection with one of the four serotypes of the dengue virus provides long-lasting immunity to that serotype. However, immunity to the other dengue serotypes is temporary, so an individual can be infected with another dengue serotype, and we call this a secondary infection. Thanks, Dr. Jericho. I'm gonna reserve the second poll for Doc Sibel, all right? Listen to this and all of those you can answer via poll. Durian, papaya, and tawa-tawa leaf are effective in increasing the platelet of the dengue patient. Sige nga, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have uh, tried these or have heard of these. Remember, we're gonna have Doc Sibel, who is the chair of Infection Control Committee. <laughs> City share with us. And you know what? Medyo, medyo divisive to ah. Uh, mas maraming nagsasabi na this is a fact. Durian, papaya, and tawa-tawa. Doc Sibel, are they effective in increasing the platelet count of a dengue patient? Well, that's uh, very interesting, Doc Pat, that a lot of people think this is a fact. This is actually a myth. Uh, but let me um, say that for tawa-tawa in particular, it is promising. So it's very promising to be uh, effective or used effectively as something that would increase the platelets. But it has, it has not yet been proven uh, just yet. But they're close. I know there are uh, a number of studies looking at it. But the problem is it's mainly um, in s- kind of smaller studies, in vitro studies, not yet in humans, no? So the main problem with Tawa Tawa is that it's uh, the correct dose. Or we're still trying to figure out what the correct dose, how to give it. No, I think it's often used, um, you boil the Tawa Tawa leaves 
and then you drink the infusion. And that's what the patients typically do. Now, I don't think it's harmful. So some of my patients have access to tawa-tawa in their garden or in their neighbor's garden. Then I say, go ahead and, you know, drink your tawa-tawa. But it has not yet been uh, proven very well. The durian will probably drive off the mosquito because of the smell. No, I don't <laughs> The platelets. The papaya. The papaya I know is still under study. <laughs> okay. Well, I love durian. I love durian. And I love papaya as well. So at least, ano, masasaya tayo at tatawa-tawa. Sasaya <laughs> durian and papaya. But thanks so much, Dr. Bell. Let's go to our third poll question. Dengue is transmitted from humans to humans via a vector. Um, and the vector is, let me try this, female Aedes aegypti and Anopheles mosquito. Who? So is that a fact or a myth? And did I say that right? Is that a fact or a myth? <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people say it's a fact. 77% say it's a fact. I'll go to Doc Jericho for this one. Uh, it's half right now. Um, <laughs> so this is a myth just because um, Anopheles is uh, the mosquito that carries uh, malaria. No? So dengue fever is mainly spread by the bite of infected Aedes mosquitoes. So that's the Aedes aegypti and the, uh, a smaller population is Aedes albopictus mosquitoes. All right, thanks. That was a trick question, guys. <laughs> But it's good that we're learning. Thanks, Dr. Jericho. Here is the fourth poll question. Low platelet count means you have dengue. It's automatic. Is that a myth or is it a fact? Uh, let me ask Dr. Sibel about this, but let's give our attendees some time uh, to share their thoughts on this. Uh, let's take a look at what the poll results say if they think, uh, para tong test, eh, para tong exam. Uh, a lot of people say it's a myth. Uh, Doxibel, low platelet count means you have dengue. So that's uh, so a lot of people are right because this is a myth. Um, low platelet does not automatically mean you have dengue. There are other things that may cause low platelets. No, uh, sometimes uh, it's another illness, maybe another type of viral illness. Maybe it's just your body not producing uh, enough platelets for another reason. So it might be a hematologic problem. So again, as mentioned earlier by Doc Jericho you have to put it into context. So low platelets by itself does not mean dengue. But if you have high fevers, if you have those myalgias, and you have low platelets, then the probability of the dengue increases. All right. Here's the final myth or fact. You cannot have dengue and COVID-19 or other mm -hmm. infections at the same time. I mean, there is no way you can be that. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd like to know if people think this is a myth or a fact. Can you have dengue and COVID-19 or other infections at the same time? Myth for 88% of those who have answered. What is your take on this, Doc uh, Jericho? Um, unfortunately, it's a myth. No, So mm -hmm. and yes, you can get dengue and COVID-19 at the same time. No? Uh, these are two different viruses that infect the body through different routes. No? So as with any infection with a bacteria or virus, there is always a possibility of a super infection or co-infection with another organism. So you just have to be very unlucky to get both infections <laughs> at the same time. So sorry. I was going to say, but do just continue to eat well, stay as healthy as you can. Keep attending our MaxiCare Wellness Fridays event so you can continue to get all information. But thanks so much, everyone, for participating in that segment and to also our experts for giving us so much clarity on these facts and myths. Now it's time to tackle more questions that you have sent via the Q&A box. Are you ready, doctors? Mm -hmm. um, here is our first question. Can adults catch dengue as well and uh, well, this was answered, right? And maybe it's just a reminder. Of course, yes, adults can also catch dengue. And how severe can you get it? We were saying it doesn't necessarily uh, get as severe in children, but can it also be severe in adults? Uh, so that's a great question. And the answer is yes. It can also get severe in adults. But uh, if you were here earlier, uh, one of the trivia cards was that only about 1 in 20 go into very bad, uh, severe dengue for adults. So it's much less so than the uh, younger population. But yes, we, we do see severe dengue in adults. 
Okay, I like this question. Thanks so much for sending this. Does it mean one can be sick of dengue twice for the same strain? You were uh, you were talking about how there are multiple strains. So yes, once you are infected with dengue, you can get sick. But what about the same strain? Can you be in infected twice from that same strain? Um, you should be immune to that strain that you were infected with. Um, okay. So the, usually the second infection is from another, uh, other, you know, the three other strains that um, you haven't been infected with. So in theory, you can have four infections, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And doc, that's true for children and adults? Yes. Correct. Okay. All right. Uh, here's another question. Um, for those who survived dengue already, what can you advise them to do? Since you mentioned that it is more scary or it can get severe the second time around. Uh, Dr. Sibel, can you tackle this? So uh, there's nothing extra that you can do except for the four S's that we talked about earlier. Um, so you really want to just uh, try and avoid uh, a second uh, dengue episode or a third or a fourth. So you would uh, kind of concentrate on trying to avoid mosquitoes, trying to kill, uh, search and destroy their breeding places, uh, self-protecting yourself. Uh, seeking early consult would be another one, especially if you're starting to feel sick and you think it might be dengue because it's your second deg and you want to um, tell your physician right away. And then, of course, you want to uh, try and um, fog those areas in the uh, community, for example, where there's a lot of dengue numbers. But those, you would do the same things pretty much as you, as you would if you hadn't had dengue uh, in the past. Um, I know you mentioned this earlier, but maybe... Maybe we can talk about it. I'll throw it back to Dr. Bell. Is dengue contagious? Ah, so uh, dengue is not contagious in the sense that, for example, if I have dengue right now, Miss Pat, I'll give it to Miss Pat and to Dr. Jericho. It's not contagious that way because it's uh, vector borne, meaning a mosquito has to bite me and uh, the dengue has to be in my bloodstream so that the mosquito will get it. And then the mosquito, if the mosquito bites Miss Pat, and that mosquito is carrying uh, the dengue that the mosquito got from me, then Miss Pat will get the dengue that way. But it's not contagious in the sense that COVID-19 is contagious, where, you know, yeah. if you cough on someone and you're unmasked, then you can get COVID-19. So dengue is different that way. Thanks. Um, about having COVID, uh, about having both COVID-19 and dengue, since some symptoms are similar, can the COVID vaccine somehow protect you from dengue? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> um, so the, the vaccine is specific for um, COVID uh, and it doesn't um, cross protect against other viruses, unfortunately. It's very specific. Thanks so much. I know that so many people are still trying to uh, send in their questions, but we do appreciate the time that you shared with us. That gave just so much clarity on dengue. That's why we have this topic, right? We, it's important for us to get the facts straight about dengue. I really appreciate all the learnings that we had here. Uh, Doc Sibel and Doc Jericho, um, we will be asking you for the final time to share uh, some more pertinent information, but this time, we would like to get your keys to living the best life. Dr. Bell, Dr. Jericho. So I guess I'll go ahead <laughs> and the girls first. <laughs> so for uh, living your best life, uh, as you can see on the screen here, it really is about um, trying to avoid uh, dengue, which is a little bit easier than trying to avoid someone with COVID. So uh, remember the four S's, as you can see on your screens. Uh, so search and destroy the mosquito sites, uh, self-protect yourself, uh, say no to indiscriminate fogging, and then seek early consult. I think that fourth one is important as well. So if you're unsure, then uh, just seek consult early. And MaxiCare, I think, provides a lot of this um, uh, seek or, uh, early consultation. Yeah, and I'm, I'm happy that we were able to share the information for all of those members and and uh, those who are curious about how they can avail of the consultation and even the lab tests that we mentioned earlier. But those are great keys to living the best life, uh, particularly uh, to help us uh, combat, prevent, and treat 
Dengue. Thank you so much, Dr. Sibel and Doc Jericho, for uh, sharing this afternoon with all of us and giving us great information about Dengue. Thank you again, Ms. Pat. Thank Thanks, everyone. See you soon again. And I'm sure we'll be getting both doctors again in future events here at our MaxiCare Wellness Fridays. I'd like to thank also all of those who participated in our Q&A and all of the different things that we've been doing here so that we can all be educated and get the facts straight about dengue. I'm sure just like me, you learned a lot, right? Now, can we have you answer, please, a short survey that will give us valuable insights for future events? We're flashing now the QR code on your screen. And also, if you take a look, at your chat, there's a link that we can share with you that you can actually copy, paste, and save for a later time. But make sure that you do answer that very short survey. Now, before we announce the winners for our raffle draw first, I'd like for you to answer this poll question. It's one question for now. I'll ask you a bunch of others later. But this is important because we'd like to know what topic you'd like to discuss or would you like to be discussed in our next Wellness Fridays. Is it diabetes? Is it monkeypox? Well, I don't know much about it. Is it obesity? What about yung rabies and animal bite? Oh, madami kong uh, magtatanong dito sigurado because these are all important topics. Really, all relate to us. A lot of people also want to learn about monkeypox and also diabetes. Noted. Thank you so much for sharing with us your thoughts. Now, let's have the names of our raffle draw winners exclusively for our pre-registered attendees here on Zoom. Let's read out the names. Remember, we are giving out uh, five PGCs for five hundred pesos. So, let's flash the names of our winners for our raffle draw. Again, they didn't have to do anything. All they needed to do was sit here and learn from our Max Care Wellness Friday event. We're happy that we get uh, to share with all of the winners. We have here Yan Manorinha, Han uh, Hanan Mendoza, Rosanna Cruz, Nona Mateo, Melanie Lara, um, and we have also, wow, Maylin Miranda, Bianca Paioli, Jesse, Jessica Pan, Angelito Santamina Jr., and Kathy Lipscock Castillo. Congratulations to all of you. Now, for those who would like to have a chance to win these really awesome prizes, make sure you register for our Max Care Wellness Fridays events and join us here on Zoom. We will share more details later on as we reach the end of this event. Like I said, I'm going to be asking you other questions. Here is a number of poll questions that I'd like for you to answer. And again, this will just give us insights as it is all related to our Wellness Fridays. So on a scale of 1 to 5, 5 being the highest important. How, is it, how important is it for you to live your best life by focusing more on how to prevent infections like dengue? So one to five lang yan. Let me see the poll results. Is it important to you? Of course it is. I'm sure it is. So we're just making it normal. And the majority, of course, is that number five is of highest importance for all of you to live your best life by focusing on things like this. Here's our second one. If you were able to join us in previous events, have you found Wellness Friday sessions like a this one, informative and useful regarding how you can take better care of your overall health. Has it been useful? Do you guys uh, now use the information? And I know some people, they now share the information that they were able to learn from these events. And that's great. So let's take a look at the poll results, shall we? Now, a lot of people, those who have attended previous Wellness Fridays, yes, overwhelming. They found these to be very, very helpful. Thanks so much. On a scale of one to five, five being the highest, Love those scales. Great how today's Wellness Friday's event has helped you further improve your health and wellness. So now we give you the facts about dengue, the hard facts about dengue. Has that or will that help you with your overall health and wellness, even with your children and your loved ones? Of course, overwhelming yes for everyone. Thank you so much. That's very encouraging. If you enjoyed this experience, obviously, with that last poll result, you did. Please do share it on your social media using the hashtag LiveYourBestLife and the hashtag MaxiCare Wellness Fridays. You can also tag MaxiCare, and please do encourage you to do that. Uh, look for them on Facebook. It's at MaxiCare Healthcare Corp. On IG, it's at MaxiCare Healthcare. They also have MaxiCare Health and Wellness, and you can tag them when you share about your wonderful takeaways about this event and of course the information that was shared on that day. Don't forget to subscribe to their YouTube channel. MaxiCare Healthcare Corporation is their channel. To learn more about MaxiCare's products, please visit www.shop.maxicare.com.ph. 
or you can send a message to their FB teacher. If you have questions about Magic Care's Wellness Fridays, you may send an email also to MagicCareWebinar at MagicCare.com.ph. Well, I see you guys at our next Magicare Wellness Fridays event in August. Well, details will be announced very soon. So make sure you guys register as soon as you see the information either sent to you or on social media. For those who are watching us on live stream, we invite you to join us on Zoom. So register for the next one. Watch out for those. Remember all the social media um, um, uh, platforms that we shared uh, from Max here. You guys can go there and follow them so you can get more information. And don't forget, huh? we have exclusive perks for those who pre-register for our Wellness Fridays events. Well, that ends our event for today. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope that you enjoyed and you were able to take the useful information about Denke. Thanks again, everyone. I'm Patricia Pizan. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And please don't forget that with Maxi Care, you can live your best life. Bye, guys. <laughs>